If you're trying to get into dropshipping, you're much more likely to make money by copying what's already working. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. To help you make your first successful store, today I'll be teaching how you can find successful products that are selling right now and how you can design a Shopify store for the highest chances of success. Hey guys, John from Vera Mecom here and today you'll be getting a first hand view of how I design stores as I build a new store in this video. From finding a product to designing the actual store. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have everything it takes to build your own Shopify store and start making money. Let's get started. So when you're making a store, it's obvious that finding a winning product is super important. It's the foundation for everything you'll be doing, so I think you should really take the time to do some research. So let me show you how I find successful dropshipping products that are actually selling right now. My strategy involves finding hot products and essentially copying what is already working. That's exactly how I consistently make successful stores like Mosquito Trap X and MrPosture.com, and it's a strategy that continues to work well late into 2019. So how should you find products to copy? The first step is finding several potential products. To do this, you should scroll through your Facebook newsfeed looking for dropshipping ads with lots of engagement. Find whatever you can and we'll narrow it down later. For now, you just want a list of potential products that people are already advertising. Before you ask, copying an existing store that's already running advertisements might seem like a bad idea, since that means you'll have lots of competitors before you even begin. But the truth is that competition is actually a really good sign. It shows that the product is selling, and that means you should be able to sell it too. If you want proof that you can sell products that other people are already selling, check out our previous video where we do a case study on our store that sold a product that everyone thought was too saturated. Anyways, before you start scrolling through your newsfeed looking for products that are selling, you want to go to facebook.com slash ads slash preferences. Here you'll find a list of items that Facebook thinks that you're interested in. If you see dropshipping and AliExpress as an interest, you should remove them before scrolling through your newsfeed looking for ads. Since a lot of dropshippers want to hide their ads from other dropshippers, they'll exclude dropshipping and AliExpress in their ads targeting. So if you skip this step, you'll miss out on a lot of potential products that you can copy. I didn't have AliExpress listed as an interest because we've been using a private supplier for a while now, but it should be listed under business and industry if you have it. Just make sure to click on see more until you get the full list of interests under this category. Once you have those interests removed, go to the Chrome Web Store and get the Turbo Ad Finder extension. I know a lot of you guys have said that it's no longer working, but if you get it from the Chrome Web Store, rather than from their website, it should work fine. Let me know if it doesn't because there's an alternative, but it doesn't work as well. Now go to the Facebook newsfeed and turn on Turbo Ad Finder. Enabling this extension should remove any content from your newsfeed that isn't an advertisement. This is going to save you a lot of time when you're looking for dropshipping ads. As you're scrolling, look for any products that you can source from AliExpress. There are alternative sources for dropshipping products, but in terms of selection and price, it's hard to beat AliExpress especially when you're just starting and can't really buy a bulk. I'm not gonna lie, they're not known for the best quality, and a lot of vendors are actually pretty bad in terms of shipping things on time, but you can definitely find some quality products to dropship on there. That's how I got started, and I think it's the best place for you to get started too. So as you're scrolling through the newsfeed, you're probably not going to be able to tell if a product is from AliExpress by just looking at the ad, especially with some of the nicer looking ads out there. So here are some tips for identifying AliExpress products. Tip number one. See if the name of the Facebook page makes sense. If the page is called Little Tiger but sells folding stools, it's probably a dropshipping store. Tip number two, check the website. Most dropshipping stores are easily identified by bad product images, sales timers, and big savings placed everywhere. And tip number three, check the product images to see if the store's logo is printed on the product. If it isn't, then most likely it's a dropshipping store, and you'll easily find the same product on AliExpress. Now that you can identify dropshipping ads, compile a list of all the ads you find by using the save video function on Facebook. While you're doing this, Facebook might stop feeding you ads after you scroll for a while. If that happens, you should just refresh the page to get a new set of ads. Also, if Facebook isn't showing you any dropshipping ads, then check out the case study I mentioned earlier for a method on how to optimize your feed for more dropshipping ads. Now once you have a list of at least 5 different dropshipping ads, you're ready for the next step. In step 2, we'll weed out anything on our list that isn't selling well and narrow it down to just one product. Then we'll take the final product and design a store around it using our one product store strategy. To save you guys some time, I went ahead and found six different dropshipping ads for a variety of products that we can compare. We found advertisers that are selling a baby diaper bag, a folding stool, light up hexagon tiles, a smart fitness watch, a mini projector, and a custom dog harness. And just in case you think that these products can't be sourced from AliExpress, I found listings for each product. Now once you have a list of ads like the ones we found, the first thing you should do is check the number of views on the ad. 
While views aren't the most accurate measurement for telling if a product is selling well, if an ad has over a million views, it's probably selling at least somewhat well. The reason it's not too accurate is because worldwide views are dirt cheap, especially when you're running a PPE campaign. But a million views is a good indicator that they're running more than just PPE campaigns. From our list of ads, the custom dog harness and the smart fitness watch are the only ones that have over a million views. We won't exclude the other products from our list yet. We'll just note that these two products might be doing the best. Then you should take a look at the Facebook page that's running the advertisement. If the page is over a thousand likes and it's been running for more than three months, then it's probably doing pretty well. Since people can buy fake likes for their Facebook page, you shouldn't use this as an absolute indicator that the store is doing well either. But in our experience, most people including ourselves don't buy fake likes for our store pages. Either way, you should use the number of page likes as a way to weed out weak products. For our six examples, the baby diaper bag has close to 4,000 likes and has been running for about a year. Plus the engagement on some of their page posts show that their page likes are legit. We'll keep this on the list. The folding stool page only has 700 likes but has been running for close to half a year. That's close enough. We'll keep it on the list for now as well. The light up hexagon tiles only has a few likes and just started running the page, which makes me skeptical about the product. I'm probably going to take it off the list, but just to make sure, I'll take a quick look at AliExpress and see how it's doing. As you can see, the hottest listing only has a couple hundred sales, which is not good. We want items that have multiple listings with over 8,000 orders. The pricing is also way too high at $25 for 4 pieces, meaning I would have to sell them for at least $50. And even then, margins would be razor thin, and the product would be overpriced in my opinion. Light up hexagon tiles aren't looking like the best option, so I'll cross it off the list. The Smart Fitness Watch page is over 5,000 likes, and has been running for a year and a half. These metrics look really good, and their marketing angle is really interesting. They're selling it as a product for veterans, and veteran supporters. I'll keep this one on the list for sure. The mini projector has 1200 likes and has been running for a month and a half. They also seem to have German and French versions of their store, which is really interesting since they probably wouldn't expand into these markets until their English markets were doing well. I'm thinking this is a pretty viral product, so I'll keep it on the list. Lastly, the custom dog harness page has been running for over a year, with over 7000 page likes. I'll definitely keep an eye out for this one as well. So far, the only products that we have crossed off the list is the light up hexagon tiles. You don't want to be too picky about your options at this point because you'll want multiple choices for the final selection process. Now you should take a look at the other ads that the pages are running. For each of your products, go to the Facebook page and under transparency, click on see more. Then go to the ads library for the page. You should look for a few different things here. 1. How long they've been running the same creative. 2. How many different ads they have for the same product. And 3. How hard they are scaling. Unfortunately, you'll only be able to get reliable information on this when an ad features a bit.ly link. I'll show you how in a second. Going to the ads library for the different pages, I found, for the baby diaper bag, they've been running the same ads since September, and they also have a few different variations of their creative. These are both really good signs, since they wouldn't keep running their ads if they were losing money. Plus the fact that they released all these videos on the same day and kept running them means the product is great at selling itself. If the product wasn't great at selling, they would have only been able to get one or two of these creatives to work, not all of them. This is looking like a potential winner. Looking at the page for the folding stool, it looks like they're testing three different thumbnails, but they don't have multiple different videos running. The only other ad they're running is this children's toy. The fact that they're testing multiple items combined with the fact that they just started running these ads makes me think that they're still in the testing phase. Also notice that their links use Bitly. Whenever you see a Bitly link, you should copy and paste the link in your browser with a plus sign at the end to check for traffic. It'll show you the number of link clicks over time, and as you can see, they aren't really pushing big numbers. I'll also take a look at their website to see why they can't scale, since I think that both the product and ad actually aren't too bad. Just looking at their pricing, it's pretty obvious why they aren't selling. 50 bucks is way too expensive for a stool. We'll go ahead and cross this one off the list. Taking a look at the ads library for the Smart Fitness Watch, we see that they're testing three new products, including the mosquito trap that we sold in the past and made a free course on, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Unlike the folding stool page though, I don't think they're in the testing phase. As you can see, they've been running the fitness watch for over a month and have several different ads running for it. It looks like they're doing really well and are just looking to find more products to sell. They even have an ad selling this ball from February that's still running. This product is definitely looking really promising. Looking at the ads for the mini projector, it looks like they've ran these ads for less than a week. They have one ad for cold traffic and another for retargeting. This doesn't look too good, but we'll keep it on the list for now. I'm guessing with the number of page likes they've been able to gather in such a short amount of time, this product is actually doing really well. Plus running a retargeting campaign is really only effective once you've scaled to at least a few hundred dollars per day in ad spend. Like I said, you want to keep your options open for the final phase of selection. Lastly, looking at the ads for the custom dog harness, 
we see that they have ads that have been running since April. They also have tons of different variations for their creative. They even have an ad with a vertical format, meaning they must have been scaling pretty high to include a creative specifically for Instagram story ads. Without a doubt, this product is selling really well. After looking at the ads library for each page, we have four products left on the list. The diaper bag, fitness watch, mini projector, and dog harness. They're all definitely selling, but now we're looking for the best option. To narrow it down to one product, you should go to AliExpress, look up each of your products, and sort by orders. Here, we'll try to weigh a few different factors to come up with the best product to sell. You should be looking at the following things. Margin, number of orders, media content, and quality. Each of them are important to consider. Margins are the biggest factor when it comes to scaling high. Since your advertising cost per purchase will increase as you scale budgets, operating at razor thin margins won't give you much room to grow. That is, if you can even get low margin products to be profitable. I like to look for products that I can sell for at least 300% of the product cost, with absolute margins being at least $25. The number of orders on a product shows that it sells well online, and that it probably can't be found at stores too easily. Personally, I like to sell items that have at least a few thousand orders already, because that means it's been tested before. Plus, reviews mean a lot more when a listing has a few thousand orders, since it's hard to inflate ratings with so many real customers. You should know that having multiple listings with thousands of orders is also a really good sign since suppliers on AliExpress tend to hop on products that sell well. The amount of copyright free media content is important when it comes to making your website and advertisements. While you can get away with using YouTube videos and other copyrighted media for some time, I would highly recommend looking for items that have media content ready to use. Having a lot of content readily available from Chinese suppliers is also a good sign that the product is selling well, since suppliers won't invest into making photos or videos unless a product has a good sales record. The quality of the product you're trying to sell should be an important factor. Sure, you can make a quick buck selling subpar items, but you'll never be able to have a sustainable store. Since Facebook is rolling out surveys to buyers very quickly these days, they'll know when customers are upset oh with God. what they receive. You'll also have to deal with way more customer service requests than you would with a product that customers are happy with. With enough chargebacks, this could result in large holds on your payments, or even bans from Facebook, Shopify, and your payment processors. In the end, this could mean you will never be able to try dropshipping again. You should use these factors to get an overall picture for each product and then try to compare them. There's no absolute formula for this. You just want to go with what feels like the best option. So let's take a look at each of the four products we have left. Starting with the diaper bag, I see that they're selling for $17 and I think I can definitely sell them for at least $50, which will leave me with about $33 to spend on an ads. It's not the best margins, but definitely doable. The number of orders on the top listing is over 11,000, so this has definitely been selling super well. And there's also several other listings with over a thousand orders. In terms of media content available for the bag, I see that the biggest listing, which is the one I would probably sell, has really great product images, which I can definitely use for my ads and my site. There's also a ton of other listings with similar bags that I can take photos and videos from. This would be great for making some high quality ads without coming up with my own videos and without running the risk of taking copyrighted media. Plus these bags must be selling really well for so many suppliers to be creating their own content. Looking at the reviews for this bag, it looks like it's a really good quality with 4.9 stars, and the supplier is considered a top brand, meaning shipping times are probably fast and reliable for AliExpress standards. I definitely don't imagine running into any problems with people dissatisfied about the product with this one. Overall, the bag looks like a good candidate with lots of sales, tons of media content, and great reviews. The only part that's not too great is the margins, but it's not too bad either. Next up on the list is the fitness watch. Looking at the listings for this product, it looks like these watches are only $9 at most, meaning margins could be upwards of 500% at a minimum, or about $36 conservatively. This would be great for scaling. There are a good amount of orders on these listings, but not as many as the bag. This surprises me since I know that these watches are probably selling way more units and has me a little skeptical about the quality of the product. You should know that with low quality products, and especially electronics, suppliers will remove listings after reviews drop too low. They will then re-upload the same listing, fake the first hundred or so reviews, then rinse and repeat. As far as media content goes, it looks like there are plenty of listings with a wide variety of photos and videos available. Just like the bag, this would be great for my website and ads. Now back to the quality of the watches, which has me concerned. The reviews are ranging from a 4.3 to a 4.7, but that's not too great considering how many orders are on each of the listings. I have a strong suspicion that these reviews are faked. Plus, I'm careful about electronics because I know they're usually not the best quality in this price range. Considering these watches are meant to be waterproof and contain a variety of sensors for heartbeat and blood pressure, I'm going to say that these will probably get me in trouble later down the line, especially if I'm trying to sell them at the margins I was predicting. I'm going to cross this one off the list since I don't want to run into any Facebook or Shopify trouble with this store and other stores associated with my name. Next up is the mini projector. Before we go over all the details again, 
It looks like there's only one listing with good enough margins, and the reviews for it are not that great. I'm also very skeptical with the quality of this product, since it looks like all the other listings are at least three times the cost. Plus, the one potential listing doesn't have too much media content that I can use. I would probably have to make my own video, or run the risk of using pieces of the ad from earlier, which I would rather not do. I'm going to go ahead and cross this one off the list for questionable quality as well. Last up is the custom dog harness. These harnesses look like they would have really good margins if we sold them for $50, which I think is super reasonable. At that price, I would have $40 for ads, which I think is plenty for a custom product like this. The number of orders on this product aren't the best, but there are multiple listings with a couple thousand orders, so this doesn't concern me. In terms of media content, there really isn't much for this product. There are a few photos, but nothing that really showcases a dog wearing the harness well. Looking at the store advertising the harness, it looks like they have a lot of original photos and videos for both their advertisements and store. If I were to sell this, I'd definitely have to come up with my own photos and videos to use. The quality looks on point with a 4.8 on almost all the listings for this product. With all the photo reviews, I'm not really concerned about fake reviews for this one. And unlike electronics, I don't think a harness will break too easily. In the end, it comes down to a baby diaper bag that has great media content, but okay margins, or a dog harness with essentially no media content and slightly higher margins. Both the products look like their quality is on point. If you are in this situation, you could pick either one, and I think it would be a great choice. As long as you knew that the dog harness would require a little more work with having to take some photos and videos. Personally though, I'm going to roll with a diaper bag since I'm making a store for the purposes of this video, and I don't want to take the extra time to take photos and videos for the product. The baby diaper bag also fits the criteria I gave in our winning products video. It solves a problem for new moms, and it's an evergreen product. The audience size isn't absolutely massive since it's targeted for new moms only, but if I sold it worldwide, there's definitely enough room to scale. If you want more details on the criteria for a winning product, check out the winning products video on our channel. Now that we have a single product, it's time for us to design a Shopify store to sell it effectively. I'll be showing you guys how I think about store design as you watch my screen during the entire process. For our store today, we'll be using the debut theme, the free theme that Shopify comes with, so that you can go out there and do this for yourself without spending any money. Just sign up for the free 14-day Shopify trial in the description down below and you should be able to do this too. But before we get started, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button if you enjoy the content and subscribe to this channel for free dropshipping videos just like this one. Also, if you want free personal help from me and the VRMECOM team, make sure to join our Facebook group where we actively answer all of your questions. Now let's get on to making this store. All right, so I just started a free Shopify trial to make a store for this baby diaper bag. Now to design your store, you want to go to the theme section on the left hand side of your screen and then go to the customize section where you can start designing the store. As you can see, it's a completely blank store. Now I already have a name picked out for this website, but for now, it's called Viram Shop because that's the name I signed up with. We'll actually be calling this store Mama Queen, so let's go ahead and make a logo. I personally use Photoshop, but honestly, any photo editor should work. It's just what I'm familiar with. If you guys haven't used Photoshop before, it's not too hard to pick up on the basics just watching free YouTube tutorials, and I really only know the basics myself. Anyways, for the logo, the first thing we want to do is pick out a font. If you've watched my videos where I reveal my past stores, then you know that most of my logos are text-based. Text logos can look great, but it's about picking the right font. To find a nice font that will fit with the store, you should go into the typography section and take a look around. I'll be using Quicksand for this store. It's a font that I've used before, and I think it really has a nice premium look to it, which is what I want to use for this store. To match the text on the store, I'll make the logo using that font as well. So I'll do a quick Google search to download the font. So then I'll go ahead and start by just typing Mama Queen in caps using the Quicksand font I just downloaded. I'll also use the semi-bold option because I want the logo to stand out a bit from the rest of the text on the store. This logo is looking a little bit plain, but that's alright. It's really easy to bring your text logos up a level by either adding some color or an icon. In this case, I think a crown would really fit the logo nicely since it does contain the word queen. So I'll google queen crown png to find a crown to put above the letter Q. Adding the word png to the end of your google search should help you find graphics to place in your image. As you can see, a copyright free crown is one of the first results. Now I'll just quickly place the crown above the queue and also delete this bottom portion of the crown so that it fits a little bit nicer. Then I'll crop the image so that it fits in the header of the website. In the header section, I'll upload the crown logo and adjust the sizing to fit the header. I think it looks pretty nice so we'll go ahead and start picking out colors. I'm gonna go for gold accents because that's a royal type color that fits the Mama Queen branding. 
I'll change the primary buttons and sales price to our gold because that's what I want to stand out. The body text defaults to blue, which kind of clashes with the yellow, so I'll change that to dark gray to fit. Now for the favicon, which is the little icon that you see in your browser tab, I'll use the crown and just shrink it down to a 32 by 32 image. I could also do MQ for Mama Queen, but I think the crown looks nice. So for the top banner on the homepage, the debut theme has kind of a weird feature. It will automatically scale your banner to a square when you switch to mobile view. Luckily, the slideshow element will actually keep your banner's aspect ratio the same for both desktop and mobile, so I'll actually use that as the main banner. I'll delete the image with text overlay that the debut gives you as the main banner, and I'll put in a slideshow. For the slideshow, I'll delete the second image, set the slide height to adapt to the first image, and delete the default text. Next, I'll look for a stock image to show off like a premium, new mom lifestyle feeling. I like to use Adobe Stock because they have professional, studio-grade photography, but you can also use sites like Unsplash. The only problem with free stock photography sites is that there's a lot of amateur photography, so you might have to do some digging around. In Adobe Stock, I'm looking for a good image of a mom with a stroller because I think it will relate a lot with my target audience of new moms. I'll use this image because it's the lifestyle type image I'm looking for. This is looking a little bit plain, so we'll put some custom text here. Now according to the research I did, one of the biggest problems that new moms have is being prepared with all their baby essentials. If you're looking for how I do my research for my new stores, then check out my last video where I do a case study on my store, Mr. Posture. So to relate with the problems that new moms have, I'll use always be prepared as the headline. Since the right side of the image looks pretty plain, I'll align the text to the right and then place it on the right side as well. I'll then save the image as a JPEG because I want my file sizes to be small. You want to make sure to make your file sizes as small as possible so that your site loads fast, especially if you plan on targeting worldwide since a lot of countries don't have great internet. After uploading the banner to the homepage, I'll turn off the overlay option to just get the image showing. After that, I dug around AliExpress to look for another image to put on the homepage. I like to use a lot of images with minimal text because it keeps the site looking very clean and easy to read. Luckily, there's a ton of images to use from AliExpress for this product, which is one of the reasons I chose it. I like this image because, again, it's a lifestyle type image for the audience I'm targeting. Before I put the image in, I'll move the section to second and also delete the featured collection because this is a one product store. For the text to use with this image, I have some copy prepared, but if you're wondering how I came up with all my writing, watch the case study I mentioned earlier. I'll then make the button label say shop now to funnel buyers to the product page, and then set the link to the backpack listing. Then, I'll go ahead and add some testimonials that I found on AliExpress. Just to make sure that people end up on the product page, I'll add another banner underneath the testimonials. We'll use the image with text overlay section again, just like at the top of the page. For this banner, I'm going to go find something nice and sweet since I'm also going to be putting a customer guarantee over it. I like this image in Adobe Stock, so I'll download it and crop it to the same size as the top banner. Once I upload it, I'll just type in our guarantee as the headline and copy and paste the return policy. Then I'll add in another Shop Now button with the product link. Then, I'll edit the footer a little bit. This is pretty self-explanatory, it's just information about the site. Next up is the product page. Since I didn't use Oberlo for this, there's no images yet, but let's worry about the description first. I like to use some emojis towards the top with the most important stuff so people read it. You can get emojis to copy and paste from Emojipedia.com if you want. Then I lead with one or two sentences from my research and then follow up with the most important features of the bag. Since I want to keep the text simple and not overload my product page, I'll put a link with the text that says see the full list of features here. I haven't actually made the page yet with all the features, but we'll do that in a second. I'll leave it off with a guarantee again just so people know that we offer it. Then I'll finish by adding the secure checkout badge that I use in all of my descriptions. If you want to use the same badge, I have it posted in a link pinned to the top of our Facebook group. Now we don't have the product images yet, so I'll get those from AliExpress. I use Clipping Magic to remove the background, but you guys can just use the default images if you want, or try clipping it some other way. Just to make the image look a little bit nicer, I like to use a slightly gray background because it really lets your product image stand out from the rest of the site. Then I'll add a little shadow to give it a really professional look. To do that, I just duplicate my backpack layer, add a black color overlay, and then move that layer down a touch. Then I'll delete the sides a bit and blend the black shadow layer with the gray background just to make it look natural. To add some finishing touches, I'll adjust the shadow's opacity and move it until it looks just right. Then I'll do this for the rest of my images, but luckily I can just reuse the same shadow for all the bags. Once I'm done, I'll upload the bags to Shopify and also link each variant with the right image. So the product page looks pretty good as it is now, 
but I think one more image in the description would really round it out. I found this image on AliExpress that really shows the bag's functionality in one picture, but it has this Chinese lettering all over it, so I'll have to modify it by stretching this portion of the image towards the top, then I'll add our logo and product name to really make it feel like a branded product. Lastly, I'll add a little touch of gold with limited release on it to give it some scarcity. Now I don't like to use timers and big sales everywhere, since it does feel a little spammy and low quality, but I think something like this still has a premium feel to it. I'll put the image we just made at the bottom of our description and center align it. Next up is making the features page which I'll link to the text in the description. For this page, I'm going to make it simple again and just add some images I found from AliExpress. All I did to these images was add some text describing the image. All I'm doing here is making a list of images and adding another link at the bottom to the product page. Then I'll make another page for the contact form so that people can email us. Since Shopify has templates already made, all I have to do is make a new page and set the template on the left side to page contact. Then I'll edit the menus for the header to include the contact page and features page. I also linked the features page to the text I made earlier in the description. I'll do one last glance of the site and as you can see it's looking pretty good. It's super easy to get to the product page from the home page and everything on the product page is working well. The images change by variant and the description is formatted well. I do notice though that the menu is missing a link to the actual product page. So I'll add that in just to make sure everyone gets funneled down to the sales page. It's all about making it super easy for a customer to make a purchase. Now before I call this done, I do notice that I'm missing some reviews and the image at the bottom of my product description has some Chinese text on it. So I'll use an app called Looks to add some reviews real quick. All I do for reviews is take customer photo reviews from AliExpress using the import extension they provide for the app. It's super simple and that's all you have to do. As for removing the Chinese text at the bottom of the image, I'll just crop it out and re-upload it to the description. Now I think the site is actually done. As you can see it's looking really good for a free theme, and I really didn't use any paid tools that you absolutely need. When I first started I was using free stock images from sites like Unsplash and Pexels. I've always used Photoshop, but as you guys saw, the only major things I used was a text function and some blending for the shadows. I'll have the links in the description for all the stuff I mentioned down below so that you guys can get started right away. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you can take everything from this video and get started on making a store. If you want help on anything I covered in this video, don't forget that we have a very active Facebook group where you can learn a lot for free. The link is down in the description, along with links for all the tools I mentioned in this video. Lastly, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.